Hey, good morning, Facebook and Get Inspired Michiana. You are watching Life Inspired, and our, our guest today on Life Inspired is Christine Karoski. Hi. So thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me. So um, I'm Diane Bennett, and um, we do this every single Friday morning. So if you're watching for the first time, this is a story about um, how God captured a life. And so um, we always like to talk about life dot, 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 inspired. Um, there's a dot, dot, dot moment in everybody's life when God gets your attention. A lot of people have numerous dot, dot, dot moments in their lives. And um, so we want to talk about what was going on. What was life like, you know, set it up. What was life like before the dots? And then what's the, the turning point story that you're going to share for today? And, um, and then now, how are you following God and what's you know, an inspired life look like, how do you stay inspired and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I don't know which oh, one you're going to talk about. I know. There's there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I was pregnant at 17 and had my daughter at 18. I had just graduated high school, and uh, I started going to college with a full-time job, a part-time job, and a baby, and it just really lost who I was. My confidence was low. My self-esteem was low, and I was looking to be filled in all the wrong places and those places led me down a path that um, I wouldn't change because I wouldn't be where I'm at now but it was a rough path to walk um, you know it took me into places I uh, met a guy who was involved with drugs and alcohol and you know when you meet somebody first the relationship's always great right, right. but it's slowly but surely you know he's saying things um, and it's I mean, those words linger in your head, you know. When you are being emotionally abused, I think you take those words on as your identity. And when you're already really low self-esteem, it's easy for those to creep in and, and take you over. And so I just started doubting that I had any worth, um, that I was lovable. You know, he would tell me, you'll never get married. And I was really starting to believe that um, I was nothing. And then... Um, comes the physical abuse, you know, fights start, things are being thrown, and the next thing you know, you're getting hit, and oh, I'm sorry, the next day, right? But oh, I'm sorry can only last for so long, because when you say you're sorry, that means you're going to change your behavior, and that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I um, never really got into drugs prior mm -hmm. to this, but I did turn to drugs during this, um, I picked up a pretty hard drug, actually, and uh, I got lost. It took me down a road. I stayed in this chaos for nine years. Wow. I had my second child during that time. Thankfully, I was able to put drugs down while I was pregnant. And that part's important because um, after trying to leave a couple times, going to local abuse shelters, um, there was a night walking back in the abuse shelter with my daughter who was probably six or seven and my son is close to one and we're walking back in and out comes his dad out of the parking lot and he's hitting me he's screaming he wants the, the baby the dad was too yes wow. and so um the staff finally got us into safety but there was felony charges that he was looking at and um unfortunately or fortunately you know i believe God's in everything, so I'm sure it worked out the way it needed to, but um, their camera loops, so it didn't stay on camera, and I, of course, backed down and didn't testify for the prosecuting attorney. The, um, the thing I did, didn't do, is I didn't hold him accountable for his actions at that time. Do I believe his heart had malice in it? No, I think drugs, alcohol, and, and a lot of factors play into the situation we were in is very toxic on both ends, right? Um, but May 16th, 2010, I can remember the night before this, praying if there was a God, if there was a God, because I was positive there wasn't and that he couldn't love someone like me, because that's what I had been told. That's what I believed. I begged him to let me overdose or just die. I was tired of staying in this vicious cycle. You know, I need some tissues, TJ. Sorry. It's okay. I don't usually cry. Um, no. But I did. I begged him to let me die that night. And when I woke up, my daughter was crying because I had been hurt the night before. And 
I was bleeding and had gone to bed and didn't know. And, and she and thought... she woke up and you were sleeping? Yes. She thought I was dead. Um, and how old was she when she found you like this? Um, she was about 10. Thanks. So... <laughs> Way to go. Live on Facebook. They I don't know. want to be in it with us. Thank you. <laughs> um, she was about 10 at this point. And so 10-year-old girl yep. is looking at her mom... Yeah. In a bloody mess, sound asleep, and you probably yeah. had had drugs too, so you yep. probably Didn't just knocked feel out. It. Just um, always minimized. You know, it's not that bad. My children were fed. My children were clothed. Mm -hmm. It's not as bad as you think, right? But I wasn't being a good mom. You know, that night, um, like I said, it was. I got a call from an officer, friend of the family, and he said, "What's going on in your house? Is not okay. We're going to give you a chance to leave." And if you don't, we're coming with CPS tomorrow to take your kids. And at that moment, I remembered my identity. I didn't have much left, but what I did have was I'm a mother. I'm a mother, and I owe them something. So I told them, if you can come up with a way for me to stay alive, I'll leave. Because you had felt like if you left, you would yeah, die. He would kill you. I really did feel like that at that point. That was my perception. And Sorry. Yeah, um, of what was happening, you know, and different people looking in may feel differently about that. And, and that's OK. You know, their perception and their reality is theirs. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely my perception that the relationship had become so toxic and so volatile that it was really unpredictable, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So this. This was a wake-up call for me. I did take him up on his offer. I went to my dad's house for three days till we figured out where I could go, you know. And um, my daughter's dad did something wonderful for me. The hardest decision, I think, for a parent is to decide when you're not the best option. And him and his wife were stable. They both had jobs. You know, they got along well. So they took my daughter, and that was the right place for her because I didn't know where I was going. Um, they also took my son for three months while I figured out where I was going. And that I couldn't, to this day, be more thankful for. I mean, they did something for me that I couldn't do for myself. And um, that's what it's all about, I think. That's where so, the random acts of kindness comes from. Yeah. It's because they did that for you. Yeah. It, it we'll really talk about like, that in a minute. Part of her ministry now has, they do random acts of kindness. So yeah, that's where that comes big from. Big part. Big part. Okay. So... I uh, went off to the mountains in Tennessee. I spent 90 days at a treatment program where I learned just as much about the choice of drug I picked up as I did about unhealthy relationships. And um, it was there I was starting to think, okay, maybe there is a God, but I'm not sure he can love a person like me. Um, you know, I had done some things that I wasn't proud of, had been places that I shouldn't have been. And, and I just thought, you know, surely... He doesn't love people like me. So, um, I don't know why, I don't know why the devil lets that lie get into us. I know. And, and it just... was so strong. It had such a strong hold. But my turning point, right, is when I left the mountains, I wasn't sure where my dad and my son and I were going. And I told them, head towards Nashville. I heard of this program, but you have to interview in person to be accepted. This is a four and a half hour drive. And this was the first time that my dad, got to see my trust in God work right in front of his eyes. It's undeniable. It could be nothing else but God, right? We got there. I met with these ladies, and I was accepted into their program. And my dad said, I can't believe you trust a guy. We drove through the night. We saved the night. And you knew he had you because we had no backup plan. There was nothing else. Um, coming home wasn't an option at that point because I wasn't mentally healthy enough to be back in my same places and environments and right, people, right. which I think is a big, big deal when you're yeah, trying to make change. You have so, to stay away for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I ended up in their program and I met a pastor who I grew really close with. And I talked to that pastor and I would tell him things that had happened to me, things that I had done, things that I wasn't proud of, lying to people to get money, taking something that didn't belong to me, you know, mm -hmm. things that that lifestyle leads you down and and he says to me do you really fully understand when God sent his only son to die on the cross for you he said if you fully understand the sacrifice he made there's nothing you can do that's too far for him to forgive 
It hit me like a ton of bricks. I can remember just sitting there crying, thinking as a parent how hard that must be to send your only child. And then it hit me how much he must love his children <laughs> to sacrifice his child so that our sins can be forgiven. And how I didn't want to ever disrespect him by not accepting that grace and mercy. So I walked through a process of forgiving myself, mm. which I think was imperative. Forgiving my son's dad. I, I had a friend um, that told me she, I don't know where, where, which friend or what, but it was like God said to her, are you higher than me? If I can forgive you, you can forgive yourself. Yes. You know? That's true. That's because so true. Because we don't. We want to don't, we don't, we want to hold on to our guilt sometimes. Right. But it holds us back. Yeah. I think and then God enabled any you of to, that. Yeah. And then God enabled you to forgive your son's father. Yeah. So I think it's um, a daily process, even with forgiving sure. myself. But um, what I was telling my son at the time is that I believe God can change the desires of my heart. I'll no longer desire the drugs. I'll no longer desire unhealthy relationships. And my son's five. He's listening to me. He's watching me. More than hearing what I'm saying, children are watching what we're doing. So mm -hmm. he was watching. And he says to me, well, if God can change you, can't God change Daddy? Oh, wow. So I sat out where the pastor lived. There was a cattle farm. I would sit outside and, and kind of just gather my thoughts and journal. And it hit me like a ton of bricks that I had to go through that process of forgiving our relationship and what had happened in it and believing that things could be different for him too. And so for 13 months, we didn't have contact with him. After 13 months, I mailed him the journal I had written every day to him. Wow. Some days I was angry. Some days I was sad and grieving the loss of a family, even though it was a dysfunctional family, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Some days I was happy and just sharing, you know, I know who I am. Today I figured out what kind of eggs I like, and guess what, it's not the same eggs as you. My mm -hmm. identity had been so wrapped up in pleasing mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. that I liked whatever he liked. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't you know my favorite color or my favorite music or my mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. So I walked through this process. I was fortunate to have that time. Most adults, I don't think, get a time out from right. life where right. bills are hanging over you and, you know, cars and houses. I mean, my son was still going to school, but I had the days to really figure out who I was. I remembered I love to sing. Yeah. I remembered I'm a really good writer. So I enjoyed writing poetry and journaling and just jotting down my experience and watching God work. When I was doubting at first his love for me, I asked him to show me in tangible ways. And he was always faithful with That's that. So cool. So that was exciting. Um, we did finally make contact with his dad and um, he has changed you know to date uh, Tristan has a relationship with his dad his dad and I get along his family and I get along um, you know he's doing what he's supposed to be doing he works he has a fiance and another child and and I'm thankful that the cycle of of abuse ends with our child you know um, Tristan doesn't remember and that's okay that's his memory coping mechanism. My daughter remembers a lot, and we've been very open and honest with each other. Um, and I think that's where the healings come in, is that we talk about things, we're open. Any chance I have when I'm public speaking, she goes with me, and she stays and talks as people stay and talk to us when wow. we're finished. She's been helpful in healing, so that's been amazing. Do you think she would sit on the couch with me sometime? I think she probably would. She gets yeah. nervous, but it's just talking, you know. Because her perspective is a totally different perspective than yours, and it her is. life is a totally it different is. life than yours. Yeah, a lot of adults have approached her, and um, they're holding resentment for their mom staying too long and ruining their childhood, is, and this is the take that they have. And she gets to walk through the process of how she forgave me and how much we've grown together and how strong mm -hmm. Tristan Haley and I are, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm still not married, but I don't believe the lie that I'm unmarriable. 
I believe Absolutely what the Bible all. says yeah. that um, the right person will seek you like treasure. Yeah. And so we're just patiently waiting. Um, but right now, God has us pretty busy. Yeah. So um, we started a ministry in Nashville right. in 2012, so six years ago. Um, I found myself in a unique position. I'm working now. I have a car. My hip was hurting pretty bad, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. So... I found myself in a position where I knew people who had, and I was crossing paths with a lot of people who didn't, and a lot of them had similar stories like my own. So I thought, okay, God, what does this look like? What are you asking? And he put me in a position to be the connector. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, you know, we're doing some work for him. He crosses our path with the right people and then crosses our path again with the people who are in need. So it's been amazing. People always say, how do you get all your referrals? And I was like, oh, well, God just crosses them and sets them right, right in my lap. Right. I mean, it's really how it works. It's amazing. But um, so we started Angels in the Attic yep. in 2012. Yep. It was not an actual nonprofit. It was just a ministry trying to help people taking in gently used items and passing those household items on to women and children that were starting over. Right. Because one of the reasons I always went back was financial. Right. It's so really let me hard. interject for a minute. So mm -hmm. I have friends um, at YWCA and some of those kinds of places that are yes. trying to shelter women. Um, and they the stats are something like it usually takes a woman at least eight times to leave yeah. Uh, a battered relationship yep. bef she keeps going back to the same one and yep. one of the reasons is because all my stuff's there I don't know what to do I can't go live with me and my kids I don't have any stuff and they go back and yep. they, they just can't get out and so you're connecting um, people that have things they would give to like Goodwill or something like that and mm -hmm. they can give it to angels in the attic and you're going to connect them with women that are trying to get out of relationships yes. correct our goal is to lighten the financial burden so right. if you're using it at your house and you no longer want it, they would use it at their house. That's what right. I tell people. Um, kitchens, pots and pans, silverware, right. dishes, bath towels, sheets, quilts, right. Right. you name it. You know, we try to take it in and get it to yeah, the right Yeah, whatever house. they need to set up so, housekeeping again. Right? Yep. Yep. And it, we've grown, um, I want to say three years ago. We applied for our actual 501c3, which is actually recognized from the federal government as a nonprofit where people's donations are now tax deductible. Mm -hmm. And that's been huge. Um, that's allowed us to take in financial donations where if a mom's getting into a home, she's short on the deposit, we can write that check straight to the landlord, to the property company, or the apartment complex. Right. Um, which is so much better than giving them money. Right. Pay a bill for them. We actually don't give any money right. ever. Right. Um, if our moms need gas for job searching, we put the gas in their car. If they need uh, minutes for their phone, we buy the phone card. You know, we're more than happy if we've got it to try to help out so that they can be successful and lighten the load. And I'm fully aware this may not be their last time going back. Right. That's not where I'm at. I don't want to be in a place of judgment. Right. I'm in a place of God wants us to help. And, and be here. And if they come back again, I'm still right here because I, it took me more than one time. Right, right. So I know, That's awesome. I know where it's at, but I'm happy that it's going somewhere that it can be used. Right. Almost, I would say, I think when I looked last, I was over 90% of the women I've helped, I'm still friends with to this day. Wow, that's so, so cool. It's been an amazing journey. And while we're helping them, it's actually healing and growing us. Mm -hmm. So it's been really, really exciting. Um, I did tell you I was having hip issues when I was in Nashville. I didn't realize how bad it was. I was limping a lot. But when I moved back here four years ago, I moved in with my dad to have my right hip replaced, which happened pretty quickly. Um, I didn't have much of a hip socket left. Wow. So between the abuse and um, some would say just, not that lucky with um, bone density, but um, I didn't have much of a hip socket left. So that got replaced. Um, and then we found out that that actual implant two years later was broken and fused incorrectly. So I had it redone. Oh my goodness. Um, so I have a titanium hip on my right side and my left hip will be replaced here coming up in a year or two. We're just trying to hold off. So um, it slows us down. Mm-hmm. 
uh, you know, being a single mom, it limits my income because uh, I'm not fully capable of sitting or standing for long periods of time. Some right. days are worse than others if it's really cold or storming. I have a really hard time getting around. So um, that's been an adjustment. So uh, as we got my hip replaced, God started crossing my path with some teenagers that my daughter knew who needed somewhere. They needed someone. And although I was surrounded by people as a teenager, I needed, I needed someone I could talk to, but I didn't really feel like I had that. Most teenagers don't go to their parents, and I get that. It wasn't that my family wasn't supportive. I just didn't have who I needed. And I can remember my grandma telling me, be who you needed when you were younger. And those words rang true when one of them asked to come live with us. And that financially, I wasn't sure what that looked like, but of course my answer was yes. Um, so we took one in, took two in. Next thing I know, I'm getting a third. Um, so there were six of you in the house now. Yeah, so it, it changed the dynamics a lot. My oldest foster son is 22. Uh, he's married with a baby. My other foster son just signed with the Navy and he's at boot camp, so I can talk to him on the weekends. We redid his junior and senior year. So that was exciting to just watch him wow. flourish. Um, it was a privilege to have him at our home. You know, he has a family and he's close with them, but it worked out well for him to come to our home and, and get those classes caught up. So that's exciting, um, and I've had the privilege of being in and out of my daughter's best friend's life for four years. She's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Love her. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's, as well, has a great mom. It's been awesome. just a co-parenting effort. You know, I just uh, adore her, and she's doing well, and my daughter's in college now, so that's super exciting. Cool. Everybody graduated. It's just Tristan at home still, yeah. so he's in seventh grade and doing well. Um, but the ministry is doing great. We absolutely love it. The most exciting thing that we started was our random acts of kindness. Right. And the reason I was giving you some background on how tight our household is, is it really is tight. But where there's a will, there's a way. And if you have it to spare, we should be looking after each other. Right. So on my 34th birthday, three years ago, oh God, I'm putting my age on Facebook. <laughs> um, you know, we saved from January to June um, some money set aside, and we decided we would do 34 random acts of kindness for my birthday oh, to celebrate. Wow. And the kids all loved it so much that they were like, can we keep doing it? And I was you know, financially, how would I ever keep up with this? But we started coming up with different ways that aren't as costly um, to help out, just getting grocery carts and taking them back into the store. You know, it could be a simple thing like baking cookies, taking them down to the fire station to say thank you or to the police station to let them know, hey, we appreciate the work you're doing. Awesome. Um, we just really try to look out. But if God puts it on my heart, I try to listen. Um, my favorite one that we've done, and we're on, I just did Random Act 241 wow. the other day. So I actually donated plasma, which I've never done wow. before. Um, little painful, but totally worth it. <laughs> wow. But it was exciting to know that my donation was going to help somebody. Right. And really help somebody. Right. And it didn't cost me anything. In fact, they actually paid me. That was just a bonus. Wow. But um, it was exciting to know that you're doing something right. that really can impact lives. And the kids have really grown through this, you know, to the point where we were driving one day. It was really hot. Haley had a brand new cold Gatorade. She doesn't even share with her brothers, right? She rolled down the window and gave it to this gentleman who was hot and outside, and she said he needs it more than I do. And I was like, wow. she's doing random acts on her own. That's so great. Because it's instilled in our life to look around, put your head up, pay attention. Is there someone Get in need close by to you? Yeah. Right, right. And really, really be thankful for the day you have. I mean. Right. I, um, I sat at my ministry's fundraiser last weekend, actually. I should have been dead. There's a couple situations that I was in that really could have turned out differently. The fact that I'm alive today, I try to wake up every morning and be grateful mm -hmm. and make sure I make the most of that day. I'm trying to mm -hmm. 
lead by example to show my kids, you know, you don't have to have a lot to do much. Right. So it's been an amazing journey. I don't know if we're ever going to stop doing random acts. No, we, um, doing them. we track them, not to boast, but to hopefully inspire others to take a look around and stop and right. be good to their neighbor and try to help out. And our, their end goal, the kids joke, they want to go on the Ellen DeGeneres show and do random acts with Ellen. Oh, and cool. I always tell them, dream big. So okay, I'm like, Okay, wait, Facebook, you guys heard that. Somebody share yes. this. Somebody that's like friends with Ellen, tweet this out to Ellen. Yeah. That, that her be awesome. beautiful Tristan and Haley want to get oh on the gosh. Ellen show and do yeah. random acts. Somebody watching this yes. knows Ellen. Please, that okay, would be great. Okay, you guys share that. That's so cool. It would be awesome. Okay, so I have friends. I'm going to share this um, with Jillian Spies. And my, my friend Jillian Spies is in a band called The Bergamot, okay. and they are so awesome. Hi, Bergamot. We love you. And they did a whole tour. They've got a Kickstarter program going on right now to try and raise mon money for their next um, album that they're making. And, and they're trying to raise money to make a video out of this tour that they did. But they did a tour of the country, mm -hmm. and they went to every single state, and they had people write on the car that they were driving. So oh, this wow. car is, like, written all over. That is so awesome. And they, I think they went and got Ellen to sign it. So so Jillian, oh if you can hook her kids up with Ellen, that yes, would be really please. fun. Yes. Um, but I want to tell Facebook too, guys. Um, so Angels in the Attic is doing this ministry to um, get things from, you know, the haves to the have-nots so that they can get out of um, domestic violence situations. And it yes. is, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It I don't is. know if you know that. So yep. you see people with the pink ribbons for breast cancer awareness. It's also October. Yep. Purple ribbons are the ones that are for, for domestic violence awareness. And so... Um, They've just had a fundraiser yep. and um, didn't quite make the goal. And they're doing more things now than they used to. So we need to reach out to more people and get more money for Angels in the Attic. So um, you. if you can share this video with people that um, would be interested in, in being sponsors. Um, yes. And I think also you need some people to help you with some of the work. You need yeah. some volunteers. I do. As, as Christmas is coming, um, we usually adopt some of the ladies that we've helped and by some. It's usually like between 25 and 37 families. Wow. So wow. it's a lot. Um, we are looking for people who can help out this season. Like you said, we did fall a little short of our goal financially. So we're hoping that people can step up to the plate. Um, if they're interested in adopting a family and doing shopping themselves, that's fabulous. Or if they just like to write a check to Angels in the Attic, it is tax deductible and, and we can do the shopping. We try to do our shopping on Black Friday because wow. we get more for our money. So okay. the sooner the better. Um, yeah, if they want to connect with me on Facebook, okay. I would love it. We have our Angels in the Attic page on Facebook. Okay. You can, you can message what we're us doing. here too so, and we'll get you in, in touch with Christine. Yes. Yep. Okay. So we're looking oh. forward. It's going to be an amazing season. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, so you heard her backstory. You heard her turning point, and you've heard her story since then. I do want to ask you, how do you stay inspired every day? What are you doing to get that connection with God and hear his voice in your life? What, it, sure. what does that look like so someone yep. knows what to do? No, I totally agree. Um, actually, a lot of the women that I walk with, I tell them exactly what I've done because it works. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, God is an intimate relationship. I talk to him like he goes everywhere with me because he does. I turn to him at every big decision, every little decision, talk to him during the day. I was asking him know. in the closet what to put on today. Yeah. Same, <laughs> same, like, same what thing. I wear today, God? Same. So, um, you know, I do a lot of prayer, especially at night. I journal. I reflect okay. on my day. I talk to God about our needs, um, my hopes. You know, and that I continue to follow his path and his will. I think that's imperative. The other thing I think is imperative, and the Bible says, where two or more gather, I am near. Um, whether you go to church or your small group or your very best friend, you have to get filled up somewhere. You have to have somebody who's pouring into you as you're pouring out to others mm -hmm. or you're running on empty. Right. So I always... Um, I use the analogy for my kids, a bonfire, right? If you have like six logs in there, the fire is blazing. If you remove one log and set it to the side, it stays hot for a minute, but eventually the embers die and it goes cold. That's the same way That's I view church. That's a great church. description, yeah. You have to get in there to get relit, and then you leave church, and when you leave church, you're not done. Your assignment just starts. 
when you leave church is when you're supposed to be the church to the people outside mm -hmm. of the doors. Mm -hmm. We forget sometimes with the politics of everything, we get caught up what God really called us to do. I believe he designed churches for like-minded people to come and get on the same page and right. get filled up so that they can pour out all week. Right. You know? Absolutely. He wants us. Mission. He wants us to talk to people. Yeah. You know, when he puts it on your heart, I've, I'm coming to the point where like someone will say, oh, I'm, I'm sick. I'm battling this. And usually I used to say, I'll pray for you. Instead, I'll say, can I pray for you now? Yeah, let's pray together. So at the grocery store, I'm praying for the cashier. Right. You know, and now she knows me by name, and she's telling me how she's doing, and praise God, you know, he is answering those prayers. I think it's imperative that we remember, you know. I think that's so hard for so many people to pray, like, you know, somebody, you know, and you do, like, you get Facebook messages, yeah. you know, and everybody's like, okay, I'll pray, you know, whatever. Right. And I really do. It's, it's scary mm -hmm. to pray out loud with somebody right now, but we don't have to be scared. I can't tell right. you the number of times I've done it and prayed right. with somebody right on the spot and, mm -hmm. and it fills them up and you're filled up from yes. blessing them. So don't yeah. be afraid, you guys, you can right. do this. You can pray right then and there with somebody when they need it. You don't have to say, I'll pray for you later. Pray for them right now. Yeah. I love that. I'm There's so no glad you right said or that. wrong way to pray. Right. You know, so it's just that. speaking to a good friend. You well, know? and I think that's the thing. So, so many of us are afraid, you know, he's God. Right. And he is. Right. There's respect. But he loves us. He does. So. He does. And the more you, you want to pray, you know, the more he'll give you the right words. Let the spirit right. lead you, you know. Right. But I, I tell people all the time, I mean, it's, it's an intimate relationship. Yep. Don't, don't lose track of him. Don't not talk to him. Because, you know, I, I firmly believe um, in May coming up, I'll have nine years sober and nine years wow. gone, right? Um. I couldn't do it without God. No. And if I leave him out for too many days, my mind wanders and it's not a safe place for me to go to. So I don't visit there. I right. just don't. I don't even let the enemy creep in at any point. I just stay focused on who he's called me to be and the work he's asked me to do. And um, that's definitely angels Very in the cool. attic and raising these kids and being part of their lives. And Very cool. It's been exciting. All right. Thank you, Facebook, for watching. Christine, thanks for sharing. Thank you so much for having um, me. I know she'd be happy to meet with you. If you want to oh get involved in Angels in the Attic and yes. volunteer, um, messages here. We'll get you in touch with for yeah. coffee or um, anything. Yeah. So, if you yeah. have a small group, I'd love to come share. I, I do oh, a lot of public awesome. speaking, so cool. that would be awesome. Okay. You heard it on Facebook. Thanks so much. Bye. Have a great day.